Well, welcome back to the Timeline Ranch. It's another beautiful day. I am not working outside though, due to the machine being incapacitated. I'm working in the building. I'll show you what I'm up to. Well, I lit one fire this morning, but I'll just let it sit there with the coals. Simmer down, because it's, it's gonna warm up through the day. So I'm concentrating on what I need to do to get to be able to start putting that fossilized limestone on the wall behind the wood burn stove here. I've got trim to go around this door. I know it's a little dark in here. I'm charging the battery that I use for my temporary lighting setup. That's what these uh, trim kits are here. I've got the little rosette at the top and bead molding and then the little base there. So I'm going to put that just on this side because that, that stone is going to meet up against it. And then in this wall cell here, I need to run six one inch EMT conduits. And what that's going to be is a junction box. Let's go upstairs. So here upstairs, this is that same, same cell that's downstairs. I'm going to put a little junction box right here actually this is the box it's gonna go right here a little eight by eight by four and there'll be another box on the exterior what that's gonna allow me to do is run one inch EMT out to the solar array that'll be out on this side of the building I'm kind of gonna have the same setup on this side but it'll be in the wall that's above the stairwell there so I needed to get these solar panels out of here to get to that box. And while I had all this stuff out, I'm going to go ahead and frame up this little 18 inch uh, right hand swing door. So that's all I was working on this morning. I already cut out the, the base plate that was there and put one stud in. So I just need to put a little header piece and one more stud to keep my 16 inch centers for sheetrock later. I'll put that door in and then I'll put all these solar panels. All these solar panels came out of that closet. So I'm going to try to get them back in there. And then I'll be working on this EMT here. That'll allow me to insulate the wall upstairs, downstairs, and put one piece of sheetrock. Because where that hardy backer, you know, that hardy backer that I've got, that the stones got attached to where that joint is where it transitions from hardy backer to sheetrock if you just try to float it and that's going to be visible over time they're going to expand and contract differently so it's best to put that joint underneath the stone if you can and that's why i want to go ahead and put it on there for that purpose and then again i'll put that casement trim on this door here because that stone's going to meet up to it so i need a further this wall out two inches to allow for uh, you know four inch fiberglass insulation over that uh, closed cell spray foam and then I'll put the hardy backer on top of that but I need I need one receptacle there and then I'm going to add a receptacle right in here uh, you know plug height 18 inches and then downstairs there'll be one in, in line with it and then I'll put another one right in Right in this area, uh, you know, upstairs, downstairs, in the same place. Can't have enough plugs. I'm sure everybody agrees with that. Well, it's kind of cramped in here. I can't film framing this door. There's not enough room to put a camera in here. So I'll be back when it's done. Well, I got the little 18 inch door framed in. I don't have the hardware for the door and all right now I didn't know what I'd bought to match it so and I fit most of the solar panels back in there yeah I think that'll work out good it's big enough I'll make two tiers for clothes clothes hangers and then you'll have the shelves to the side where you can still get to it. You'll be able to step in, you know, a little bit. 
everything's tiny it's a tiny tiny house a big tiny house but it's a tiny house so i got a little sidetracked i went outside and finished putting that bracket on that flue for the wood burn stove of course the bolts i got for it were a little too long i'm about to get some other bolts but definitely solid I'm not gonna go anywhere i broke one of the bolts i ran the nut on about a half inch and i couldn't get that thing back off for anything i don't it wasn't cross threaded though it just the threads galled up in there so i gotta get some more bolts stainless I had to put two three eighths nuts over this five sixteenths bolt to space it out the only thing i like out here is putting the np1 where the flue pipe goes through the thimble on that side. The back side, it's all sealed already. I think what I'm working on now, I've got those two other doors. I'm going to go ahead and put those in. That way I don't have to keep moving them around. They're, you know, they're in the way, but if I install them, then they won't be in the way. They'll just be a door. So that's what I'm going to work on next. So these are the two doors I'm going to frame. With this one here, I didn't realize it was damaged when I bought it. It's got a big chunk missing out right here. I'll flood it with sheetrock mud and then cut some grooves in it that makes it look like the grains. You'll never know it's there. So this is going to be right here. That's the restroom, future restroom. Right now it's a storage room, as you can tell. I'm going to frame one there and then the other one. Is going to go right here under the stairwell this is going to be storage i'll make some little shelves underneath each step like a lot of people do and then this is the 200 amp panel main electrical panel it's going to go right in here and then it'll be a little control panel showing inverter you know battery status and all that that type of stuff and i'm gonna put a big big drawer underneath the landing of the stairs right there that'll pull out try to utilize every little space we got here
know why anybody pay for shivs when you can just rip a few real quick. See how this has a spring to it? Is what's happening. This the side that has the hinges is tilted that way slightly. So I need to shim this out just a little bit and that'll square it up so this doesn't have that tension on it. I'm setting these doors I like to fasten the side that has the hinges first and I make sure that this side is nice and plumb and you know where I want it I don't shim this side so I'll just push it all the way at the top and I'm leaving a about five eighths of an inch gap here at the bottom and that's to allow for quarter inch hardy backer and tile and tile adhesive that way I don't have to cut this later to get it. It's it. I don't want to have to cut around all this. I can just slide the tile under it and it'll be easy to do. But anyway, I'll make sure I got my half inch sticking out on the other side for the sheetrock thickness to meet the trim. Tack this side. Square up the top. Tack it. And then check it. You know, make sure everything's where it should be and it doesn't need to be shimmed or anything and then this is the side that'll get the shims and I'll use the edge of the door to true it up and then the other side I'll put my forefoot level to make sure it's you know looks straight not wavy well I got it pretty good still gotta clean the mess up but I can do that tomorrow That was pretty even all the way around. The bottom of this door is warped. Right here kicks out at about three eighths of an inch. I can get it wet a little bit and wedge it. Wedge it so it stays in the right position and it'll dry out pretty quick out here. Well, I'm heating up a little water for Moringa tea. I'm going to take the easy way out on cooking tonight. I'm just going to heat up some meat that I already barbecued. Probably a can of ranch style beans. Well, I'll see you on the next one.